Okay. So, okay. Now, yes. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, DrupalCon. Today, we are talking about uh, observability. So, we are looking how to understand how our, um, our Drupal instance is doing, uh, just looking from the outside. I'm Luca from Italy. I'm a mm, Drupal, mainly Drupal and PHP developer for uh, an Italian company called Sparfabric. Here you can find some, <coughs> some of my social. The name is everything the same, so it's easy. Just a couple of words about uh, the company, Sparfabric. <coughs> we are a, a tech company. We do a lot of uh, custom application development mainly focused on uh, cloud native uh, infrastructure so we develop uh, uh, application that will be deployed on some cloud uh, cloud uh, vendor also drupal so uh, we, we have a lot of drupal instances on the cloud um, for that we are partner <coughs> of all of the main uh, cloud uh, providers also alibaba in china <coughs> Basically, uh, right now, we are all working with distributed systems in some, of some form because we have microservices, containers, uh, cloud, uh, serverless, uh, headless, uh, message queues, and so, and so on. And <coughs> mainly a, um, a lot of combinations of those technologies. So uh, all of those complexity increase the number of failures that our systems uh, may encounter uh, in production. And because uh, uh, in a distributed environment, uh, all systems can be implemented uh, in with different technologies or different languages or systems, uh, it's complex to understand, usually it's, com it's complex to understand uh, when a problem occurs, where it occurs, and uh, uh, it's difficult to predict possible failures in, uh, in the future. <coughs> to ov overcome these problems, uh, we can uh, use uh, this technique that is uh, observability. That is a, me a measure uh, of the internal state of an uh, application just looking from the outside. So we don't want to log in in every uh, component of our infrastructure just to understand uh, uh, some where where a problem uh, is we just want to look from the outside and uh, uh, we need uh, more data uh, other than <coughs> classic metrics like uh, cpu and memory uh, we need uh, data from the inside of the application the application to understand <coughs> how it works and how it behaves um Observability is based on three pillars, basically. Uh, so we have logs, metrics, and traces. And during this presentation, we will uh, look, uh, we will uh, understand how to expose logs, metrics, and traces from our <coughs> Drupal websites to uh, observe it. And the end result of what we want to achieve in this, uh, with this talk is to uh, have this, uh, this dashboard uh, that uh, shows us, uh, for example, uh, the a head map of the request time and response, ta response time of our application. For example, the number of users registered, the number of nodes created, the distribution of logs during time, and the details of logs from Drupal, and for example, from an uh, external microservice. So we, uh, we want to have all those data in a single dashboard to uh, understand uh, how the system uh, works. Okay, to do that we need different tools, uh, different technologies to collect uh, logs, traces uh, and metrics. <coughs> in, this, uh, in this presentation we, uh, for logs uh, we will use Monolog, Prompt, Tail and Locky. Later I'll show you everything. Uh, matrix for, for metrics we will use Prometheus, uh, for traces uh, we will use OpenTelemetry and Tempo, and Grafana 
is the tool we we will use to create the dashboard to show the all the all the metrics collected mm, grafana is an open, su open source project uh, and uh, it allows you to query visualize alert uh, everything regarding logs metrics and traces uh, no matter where they are stored so uh, you can uh, collect data from uh, uh, basically everywhere so let's start with logs okay logs uh, are about storing uh, specific events that occurs during the uh, execution of our code to do that we are using monolog monolog is a standard php library library is used for for every kind of php project like symphony and uh, it can be used in uh, in drupal using a contrib module that it's called monolog uh, and with monolog you can send uh, logs for example, to files, uh, to sockets, uh, to syslog, uh, inboxes, uh, Slack, uh, whatever. And uh, Monolog implements uh, the P PSR3 uh, interface, so it's compatible with uh, the log, uh, the logger of um, of Drupal, of Core of Drupal. So we can interoperate without any any problem. So uh, first of all, you have to download the the module. Uh, you can do that using Composer because you need both the module and the library uh, that implements uh, all the all the logging. Then, after enable it, you have to configure Monolog. M the Monolog module for Drupal doesn't have a user interface, so you have to configure it uh, manually using a YAML file. A YAML file, for example, this Monolog.services.yaml in the site's default uh, folder. In that file, you have to uh, specify the handler that will manage your logs. In this case, we are using this uh, rotating file handler that will save uh, uh, a, log, uh, a log file per day. And then, uh, in this example, after 10 days, it will delete the, the oldest one and create uh, a new one. And will log every, everything from uh, the info level to uh, fatal error and, and so on. After that, you can uh, create, uh, uh, de define handlers, so, uh, sorry, channels. So in this case, we are logging uh, all logs. So we are using the default channel. You can log for uh, different channels to different uh, places if you want. In this case, we are, log we are using uh, default we are using this rotating file handler we defined in the previous slide. We are using JSON as the format uh, of the log, and we will say why. And then uh, we are, we are mm, defining a set of processor that will uh, alter the log before it will be written somewhere uh, to add some uh, useful information uh, like uh, the, the current user or the IP, or the line uh, and the file where the, the log is generated. And with this configuration, uh, we have to uh, add this, this file to the set of uh, service container uh, in Drupal. So in the settings PHP file, we have to add this, uh, this, uh, this file to the YAML of the service container. And if we is wrote this line uh, somewhere in our code, so we log uh, user using DrupalCon uh, okay, uh, as channel a notice with some text. What we what yeah what we have in the in the log file, for example, uh, the one of today, we have uh, all, all the information <coughs> in uh, in a JSON format. JSON, JSON uh, is useful because we can uh, um, um, query all the information uh, easily, so we don't have to parse the, the line because it's uh, in a structured, structured format. And uh, if, you, if you want, uh, we, we can add more processors to Monolog to add uh, other informations to, to a log, uh, to a log uh, line, for example, in a uh, cloud infrastructure you can uh, you can add the, the name of the pod, the ID of the cluster, 
for example, the ID of the order in an e-commerce uh, website uh, to filter all the logs uh, probably generated by the user with, uh, with an order, and so on. The problem here is that uh, in a cloud native environment, we have different servers, uh, different pod, pods, uh, and we need to uh, extract the logs for, from every instance of our infrastructure. And we have to discover them, uh, scrape them, and send to a log collector. Uh, so we are using Promptail, that is an agent. It's from Grafana. Uh, that can uh, scrape and extract logs uh, from files, for example, and send <coughs> to this other project that is called Loki, from Grafana again, that is uh, a log collector. So Loki is, is, uh, is the storage that uh, persists uh, persist logs. So again, uh, in a cloud native environment, uh, uh, we will have uh, uh, an instance of Promptail deployed on every server or on every, every pod that uh, uh, sends data to, to an instance of Loki somewhere. Configuring Promptail is quite easy. Uh, the important part is that uh, you have to uh, uh, specify the path where the logs are in Drupal. Uh, if you want to extract uh, some, inf some information from the JSON and expose it uh, as label to, to Loki and Grafana, and then the endpoint of the, of the Loki collector that will aggregate and store all the, all the logs. At the end, on the, on the Grafana dashboard, we can, uh, we can create a panel like this with all the, all the logs uh, recorded generated and recorded uh, in, uh, in Grafana itself. So basically, we are using Monolog to generate logs to the file system, then Promptail that read the logs, uh, sent to uh, Loki, and then we are using Grafana to, uh, to query and, uh, and show all the, all the logs. OK. Then the, uh, the, the second pillar of uh, observability is, is matrix. Metric are uh, a measure a measure of a mm, specific value in a specific time. For example, we go back to Prometheus later. Uh, for example, uh, the number of time we receive uh, a request, uh, how much time we spend creating a response, uh, how many uh, user or node has been created, uh, uh, the number of modules uh, with security issues, uh, uh, the number of orders uh, in an e-commerce uh, website, and so on. So uh, specific values uh, that changes over time, basically. To do that, we are using Prometheus. Prometheus is, is a um, data store, uh, a, a time storage uh, database that collects uh, events uh, uh, with uh, the specific timestamp when they occur. Uh, Prometheus is an open source software, is, uh, has been developed by Sound SoundCloud, but na right now is an independent uh, uh, open source project. And uh, it was the second project incubated by the CN CNCF, uh, the Cloud Native Foundation, uh, just after uh, Kubernetes. Okay, to expose uh, metrics uh, to Prometheus, we are using uh, a module mm, for, for Drupal called Observability Suite, or abbreviated O11Y. So uh, this, uh, this is a standard Drupal module, so you can uh, install it using uh, Composer, and then uh, enable it using Drush. And for, uh, for, for this example, we are enable the, uh, the metrics and metrics requests submodule. Then. Uh, we have to configure it. Uh, for example, we can uh, uh, enable the node count and user count uh, collectors uh, to expose uh, the number of users and number of node in our Drupal. And for, for the node, we can specify the content type we, we, want, to, we want to expose. And then, uh, the slides is a little truncated, but then we have 
in this example to uh, enable the access of the Prometheus data uh, for the anonymous user. So an external uh, system can query data on this uh, slash metrics endpoint. So the module will collect data about, uh, in this case, uh, uh, users, uh, nodes, uh, and requests, and expose them <coughs> to a slash metrics uh, endpoint of our mm, Drupal website. And uh, because uh, uh, PHP doesn't use uh, an application server, so it doesn't store anything uh, any anywhere, we have to uh, store data, data somewhere between requests. And in the um, default implementation, we are using database, but, but the module supports uh, also memcache or Redis if you want to store all the information uh, in that uh, system. The, the main uh, uh, observability metrics module uh, expose to Prometheus uh, uh, data about the PHP info, the number of nodes, number of users, uh, the number of items in queues, if you use the queue, the queue API of Drupal, the number of extensions enabled. Uh, but there are a set of sub-modules uh, you can install to provide metrics about caching, uh, uh, configuration, uh, database uh, requests, uh, update, uh, comment. It's quite easy to wrote a new module to collect and expose uh, some other kind of information that, that, you, may, that you may need. If you enable the module, configure it, uh, and then go to uh, slash metrics uh, endpoint, uh, you will see this uh, text uh, uh, response that is uh, a standard Prometheus format that in this case uh, it exposes uh, uh, an, an histogram that is a data structure in, uh, in Prometheus. Let's say, for example, that the user slash admin slash create, uh, sorry, user dash admin does create a route. <coughs> and uh, for uh, a set of mm, time bucket, this is in seconds, uh, how, how many requests, how many response uh, takes this time uh, to be returned? So, for example, we have four requests that takes uh, two, sec two seconds and a half, uh, six uh, that then takes uh, five seconds, and, and so on. With all those information, we can, uh, for example, uh, generate uh, heat maps that expose all the, all the response, uh, again, from uh, five milliseconds to, to 10 seconds. And here we can see the, the, mm, the point uh, collected by, by Prometheus, uh, um, the more uh, uh, lighter is uh, uh, when we have uh, more data in that, uh, in that point. And uh, uh, if, uh, if color is uh, near uh, zero, our site is faster. Is near 10 seconds, is lower. So we can, we can understand just uh, by looking at this, uh, this graph uh, if uh, we, are we have some problems uh, in with the response time, basically. Mm, Prometheus, uh, con configuring Prometheus is quite simple in our case. Uh, we just uh, 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 give this uh, job name, says that uh, Prometheus will, will, will call the slash metrics endpoint uh, every five seconds, and uh, the URL, basically, of the, of the website, uh, of our website. So again, we are using uh, the observability metrics module to store mat uh, metrics to the local database, then Prometheus every five seconds collect them and send them to, and then we are using Grafana to uh, create dashboard on that data. Okay. The last uh, pillars is uh, traces or distributed traces because we have probably a distributed system. And uh, with distributed traces, uh, we can understand uh, all the request response flow uh, the all, uh, of the, the, the data pass through from the beginning to the, to the end. For collecting traces, we are using this project that is called OpenTelemetry. 
that is uh, quite a new project. Um, it's um, created uh, after the merge of uh, Open Census uh, from Google and Open Tracing from, from Uber. Uh, also, Open Telemetry is um, incubated by the Cloud Native uh, Computing uh, Foundation, and uh, it can be used uh, to collect uh, um, metrics, uh, mm, logs, and, and traces. We are using it uh, only for uh, traces in this case because the uh, PHP implementation of the SDK for metrics uh, and logs uh, are not ready. So uh, we are just using it for mm, traces. But uh, it, uh, it has become the, the standard for collecting uh, all those uh, information about observability and all main uh, cloud uh, vendor uh, are adopting it to uh, to collect uh, to collect the data as i said uh, the uh, logging logging support has not yet implemented uh, for php metering and tracing uh, are in pre alpha status uh, tracing is uh, usable metrics uh, not yet for example, the, Go the, the JavaScript uh, SDK is, uh, is more mature. Okay, OpenTelemetry uh, is uh, made of uh, different components, uh, different uh, pieces. One of that is uh, the OpenTelemetry collector, that is uh, uh, basically a middleware that will receive all data from uh, your, your application, and uh, it, it can... Uh, um deliver data to other to other system this is useful because uh, um, it is uh, vendor agnostic so you can switch the storage of uh, tracings and log and metrics uh, but uh, uh, all of your code stays the same so uh, it's useful to use and in our example we are using tempo to store traces, so we uh, we are using uh, open um, open telemetry collector to collect the traces. Then we send uh, traces to Tempo, that is uh, a storage uh, a storage engine for for tracing, uh, also from uh, from Grafana project. So it can uh, it can be used to store and then query uh, traces information. The observability suite module has uh, a sub-module to deal with, uh, with traces, so we can enable it, observability traces. And uh, because uh, usually uh, you, you want uh, uh, to have only one uh, library that uh, instrument your code to extract information, uh, and uh, maybe you will have different uh, modules uh, that will deal with, uh, with, with the instrument, uh, the code to extract the data. Uh, we create uh, a third project uh, that is called Tracer, that contains all the logic uh, that instrument uh, the application, and then different plugins that sense that traces uh, to, uh, to different backend. One of that is the observability, mod observability suite module, the other is the web profiler module that uh, is useful on, uh, on a local environment when you develop a, a website. So to, to configure which uh, backend to use, uh, you can uh, specify it in the settings.php file uh, here, uh, since that the tracer plugin in this case is the observability one. If you want more information about uh, how mm, this works, uh, there is a, a blog, a blog post on the Spar Fabric website to explain uh, all the integration between the observability module, web profiler, and tracer. So we are using uh, uh, tracing to uh, understand the journey of a request and a response. Uh, through uh, a distributed system. And uh, in this case, uh, to give you an example, we are using a Drupal 10 website that uh, render a page, renders a page uh, with data from an external microservice. 
So basically, it's quite simple. Uh, we have a custom uh, controller that renders uh, this route uh, microservice one. The controller uh, contacts an external uh, an external service uh, via HTTP, takes the response uh, and render uh, uh, the response uh, on the page. So. Uh, the controller is quite easy, so we uh, use the HTTP client service from Drupal core to call an external uh, an external microservice. This is written in Go, just to, uh, to do a different uh, using different technology. Then we take the the contents of the body of the response, log the message, and then return a Drupal, a Drupal render array uh, that prints uh, the message. To uh, um, expose all the metrics, all the traces, sorry, we collect to Grafana Tempo, to open, col uh, open telemetry collector and then Grafana Tempo. Uh, the configuration of open telemetry collector is quite easy. Again, we are using HTTP as a uh, communication protocol. Uh, we are sending all the collected traces in batch to an instance of Tempo. So, quite easy. Um, the uh, observability suite automatically instrument your application. You don't have to do uh, anything. Uh, if you just want uh, traces about uh, the, the events uh, dispatched by the event uh, component of, uh, of Drupal, uh, tweak templates, HTTP calls, uh, database queries, and uh, services. So every time Drupal requests uh, uh, a service from the service container. But you can also trace uh, your own code uh, very easily. To, to do that, for example, uh, after you receive uh, the, the request, uh, the response, sorry, from, from the external microservice, you can call some complex method. Uh, and in this complex method, you retrieve the tracer uh, service, create a new span with some labels uh, and some values, then do the hard work, okay, sleep one second, for example, and then uh, stop the stop the, the duration of, the, the, of that span. Um, after do that, if you go to, to Grafana, uh, to, the temp the, uh, to a panel created from uh, tempo, tempo data, we can see uh, that uh, there are a lot of lines before and a lot of, li of lines after, but uh, at some point, uh, Drupal calls uh, its controller, the controller that uh, will render that page. The controller will, will do an HTTP call that will last uh, one second. Then uh, we see a different, uh, this, uh, this is uh, in different color because those two traces comes uh, from the Go microservice. Uh, that takes one second, for example, to, to complete. Then some services uh, again from Drupal, and then this custom uh, custom trace that, that takes one, this, the one second uh, with sleep. Uh, so we can uh, understand uh, all the flow all, uh, of the request uh, between uh, all the services and layers of Drupal, then uh, external services, then again the response uh, will uh, will reach Drupal uh, again and all the uh, all the services uh, and uh, twig call and database call to render the page uh, to to the user so in this case we are using uh, the tracing module uh, sends data to open telemetry collector that sends data to tempo and then using grafana to collect uh, all information <coughs> uh, this is useful, for example, uh, if some error occurs. So, for example, uh, this, another, uh, this is another controller that uh, calls another endpoint uh, of, uh, in, the, in, the in some other microservice uh, that returns an error. So, for the user, uh, we, we, we need to print some pretty error to, uh, uh, to say them that some, something is wrong. 
uh, but uh, internally we have to understand why uh, this uh, microservice, for example, return, uh, return an error. This is, uh, this is easy because uh, all the requests between Drupal, all the microservices and return uh, contains uh, a trace ID that correlates uh, the same request uh, in every layer uh, that will be uh, uh, passed. Uh, for example, this uh, slash microservice2 uh, that return uh, this, uh, this error has this uh, trace ID. If I look for the same trace ID in the logs of the microservice, for example, I can say that uh, the, the endpoint 2 is not implemented. So uh, we, are, we are calling an endpoint that uh, does not exist and uh, we can easily understand uh, uh, where is the problem in this case. Without uh, this, uh, this uh, trace ID correlation in, in, in a production environment where the logs are uh, many, many more, maybe it's difficult to understand uh, which uh, log uh, of the microservice is correlated with uh, uh, a log in the in, in Drupal. This, uh, we, we can do this uh, easily because uh, um, we can create uh, a processor for the monolog module we saw in the in the beginning to uh, add the trace ID to every line we log in the in, in the in Loki for example. The observability module uh, do that uh, for you. So uh, there is a processor for monolog that add this trace ID to logs. So in the set of processors of, uh, of monolog, we can add this uh, tracer um, processor that add the information uh, of the trace ID generated. And then we can configure Grafana to, to link from logs to metrics, so to traces, uh, and then we can easily uh, find the information we, we need. And uh, the same information, so the, the trace ID of a page uh, is added both to the uh, web profiler toolbar in this trace ID line, and uh, also as a response either, so you can just uh, found it uh, in the response of every every page, every page. Okay, now I just want to show you a quick demo. For example, so this is a <coughs> standard Drupal 10 website uh, with the Umami profile, and uh, if we go, for example to this uh, microservice one endpoint. Okay, we saw that this we, we received this data from remote microservice. In the, uh, in the dashboard of uh, created by Grafana. Okay, for example, this, this line has been uh, uh, logged from the controller that renders that page uh, with this data from microservice. And uh, here, if we click on, uh, on this tempo link on the, on the trace ID in the log, we can see all the, all the information that has been traced from uh, the internal of, uh, of Drupal and then to the microservice. And uh, here there are a lot of information, but basically we can see all the, all the services that uh, uh, Drupal requests from the service container, starting from the module handler, then uh, the stream wrapper and so on. So here, here, here we have the name of the service extracted from the service container. Then at some point, uh, Drupal performs uh, a query to, to the database. And then if we go, okay. 
and at some point, uh, as we see uh, in, the, in the slide, uh, it calls uh, uh, the controller that renders uh, uh, that page. The controller will use the tracer tracer service uh, uh, because it's injected in the, in, the, in, the, in the constructor. Then it performs uh, this HTTP call to microservice endpoint one. Then the microservice itself uh, is instrumented to, uh, to expose traces to, to Tempo and Grafana. So this uh, endpoint one and this uh, uh, slip, uh, uh, slip trace comes from, uh, from, uh, from the microservices in Go. Then, for example, uh, because in the code, just after we receive the response uh, from the external microservices, microservice, we log it. So we need to uh, take the logger factory from the service container. We see that the just after the response of the microservice, uh, our code is uh, requesting the logger factory service that probably uh, request uh, the monolog handler rotating file service uh, and so on. Then we trace uh, our complex method that uh, uh, takes one second to complete. And then uh, probably we have this event uh, that is the kernel view, that is the event uh, Drupal dispatches uh, to render the page. And then at some point, uh, maybe we okay. At some point, uh, Twig renders uh, the page dot HTML uh, dot Twig, and so on until uh, the end of the page, because there are a lot of services called during a, a page a page request, and. Uh, This is uh, the, the, the dashboard. So uh, here we have uh, all the uh, request uh, response time from, uh, from our Drupal instance, for example, the number of users created. So if I go to the website and add a new user, on the Grafana dashboard that will refresh every five seconds. Right now we have 12 uh, users. If everything works, uh, the next refresh we will have 13, the 13 one. And so we can uh, uh, see in real time uh, um, all the metrics and the logs uh, and if you want traces of our system. If we, if we have uh, a different dashboard like this, that uh, me measure the CPU, memory, network, uh, and so on from <coughs> our cluster, for example, we can, we can correlate uh, maybe a spike uh, in CPU and memory uh, with a spike in node creation or user login or errors uh, or, uh, or whatever uh, without uh, logging to Drupal or logging to uh, the server to extract the logs uh, uh, just uh, from uh, a single uh, a single point. Okay, if you want uh, all this uh, all this project, uh, so all the the, the Docker stack uh, that contains uh, all the services, Tempo, Grafana, Loki, uh, it's uh, online on this uh, repository. So you can use the dev to spin up. Uh, all the stack locally. Uh, in the repository, there is uh, also the Go code of the microservice, if you want to, to look at it. And also, an example, Britain uses, uh, using this, uh, uh, maybe it's too, too small, but uh, using a library from Grafana that is called K6, that is useful to do for, do for doing uh, 
uh, stress test and performance uh, mm, measurement. Uh, so you can uh, wrote uh, using JavaScript uh, a test plan and then execute it to stress test your server. And if you go to the K6 folder and run, okay, it's maybe. Okay, if you uh, k6 run scripts.js.js and go to the dashboard, uh, you will see data flow because we are creating logging, uh, creating nodes, uh, mm, con mm, perform call to microservices, and so on. So you uh, you fill the mm, dashboard with uh, with data without going to Drupal and create it. Uh, to demonstrate that everything uh, everything works. Okay, so there are some questions. We have five minutes. Oh. No, just uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the very interesting talk. Um, I have one question. What effect do you observe with that um, in terms of performance? Okay, uh, of course there are uh, um, there are some uh, some impact on performance uh, uh, instrument and application. Uh, I don't have uh, specific uh, data about it, uh, but uh, of course some uh, some some CPU cycles goes to 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 do performance uh, instrumentation, uh, mm, you can uh, mm, you can optimize this uh, using uh, things like uh, wrote logs to file uh, or send uh, trace to a collector because it's in the same uh, server where you are. So this is uh, quick, and then. Uh, uh, mm, send uh, logs uh, and uh, traces and so on to to the real storage uh, after, so you can optimize uh, the time when you spend. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, oh sorry. <laughs> Thanks for the presentation. Just uh, a quick question: Is there any reason why you overlooked something like uh, Splunk for log uh, collection? Okay, uh, you can you can do the same with Splunk. Uh, it's uh, it's the same. Uh, I, I, we, we are using Grafana just because we can uh, use the, the dashboard of Grafana to, um, uh, to, to create, to create uh, everything we need uh, in the same place. But uh, you, can, uh, you can deliver logs to Splunk and then uh, query, query them from Grafana. So you can, uh, you can use Splunk just for, from, for storage and then uh, use Grafana to, to, query, to query logs from Splunk. Uh, okay. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, which of these tools needs subscription. Oh, it's everything uh, open source, so you can you can use Grafana Cloud. It is a paid service if you don't want to manage uh, all the all the components. So you they they will provide you an instance of Tempo, Loki, the Grafana dashboard, the Prometheus uh, on cloud, and you have to pay for for that. Uh, and instead, if you want to use the open source version of everything, you have just to deploy them somewhere. Uh, it's everything uh, free. How do you deal with sanitizing log data, like personal information? Good question. Uh, for example, you can wrote a processor to, to remove all, uh, all data. Uh, in, a, in a processor, you receive uh, um, a log record from Monolog with all the information uh, uh, logged and structured, structured. So you can uh, remove, for example, everything uh, is uh, sensitive from, from, from logs. The, the module doesn't do anything because we don't know the, the, the effective message uh, you, you are logging. So. Hi, uh, does the uh, observability module provide any sort of uh, JavaScript error handling? Mm. So, 
No uh, traces or pickup errors on the client side to be shipped? Not at the moment, only, okay. only back end. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, time is over, so. <laughs> Join us uh, to the contribution sprints because uh, every project uh, in Drupal needs uh, some ends and uh, fill the session survey on the, on the mobile app. Thank you.